Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, this lecture is part of the Advanced Mathematics course for high school students uh, presented on Unizor.com website. And uh, I do suggest you to listen to this lecture from this website, from the video which is linked to this website, because um, the lecture has its notes. Notes basically can be used like a textbook. Um, now, the topic I'm going to talk about is related to the general category of limits which we are talking right now about, but in particular it's also related to uh, an exponential function with a very special base which I denote as a letter E. Um, now, the E is a specific number in mathematics. It plays in um, calculus and mathematical analysis as important role as the number pi plays in geometry. Um, so I'm going to talk about this number, uh, about its properties, and about the uh, exponential function with the base equal to e. Okay, so that's, that's what it is about we're talking about today. All right, so um, this lecture is uh, heavily dependent on all the material which I have presented in the uh, topic related to exponential functions, so I suggest you to refresh this. Um, also, binomial um, formula will be used, uh, which is also presented in the course as um, part of the mathematical concepts. Um, uh, uh, the lecture was um, induction uh, and specifically binomial formula in the induction category. Um, okay, so first of all what I would like to talk about is some interesting property uh, of well exponential function but basically many other functions. So let's recall what exponential function actually is all about. That's what it is. Where a is well some positive number usually. Now the graph of this function with a greater than 1 is monotonically increasing function at point x equal to 0 a to the power of 0 is always 1 and then as x increasing the function increases to infinity as x decreasing to a negative part and you remember that negative exponent is basically 1 over corresponding positive um, exponent so like a to the minus 2 is actually 1 over a squared, right? So um, the function obviously goes down to 0 when the argument goes to uh, minus infinity. Okay, so we will consider this function. Now, this and many other function um, uh, can have uh, in at, at any point actually, but we will consider the point 0 um, uh, we will discuss the, the concept which I call a steepness of this function. You see, some function can be this way, some other function can be this way. Well, obviously, the dotted line is steeper at this point, zero. Now, how can it be measured, this steepness of the function? It's basically a characterization of the function, and we are interested to know whether one function grows faster than another or steeper than another in this particular case. Because both of them are equal to 1 at point x equals to 0, right? So what differentiates the behavior of this function from this function? Well, obviously the steepness is one of the characteristics which um, basically reflect this behavior. Now, the way how we will um, try to approach this concept of a steepness um, we already touched, by the way, this point when I was talking about exponential function, but now we will talk about this in, relation to, in relationship to the number e, and that's why I would like to spend a little bit more time. Um, okay, let's do it in a very uh, large scale. Now, steepness of this function can be characterized by an angle of 
the line which is tangential to our line. So this is tangential line by this angle. So the steeper the line, actually it means that at this particular point the tangential line has a larger angle. And the angle is usually characterized by either the angle itself or by some well, trigonometric function of this angle or in, in the case which I would like to, to make the angle is very, very much characterized by the ratio between this and this because this is the right triangle obviously so the ratio between these two things is characterizing the, um, the angle uh, obviously the larger this ratio the steeper the curve is Okay, but how can I determine the, 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 this particular angle and, and this particular ratio for, for a function which is given by a formula? It's not really easy thing to do, right? And here is what um, I suggest to do in this particular case. Let's say this is a point we would like to know what is exactly this ratio um, uh, is so I will do I will take another point nearby and I will replace the tangential line which is somewhere here with this one now obviously if I will make the right triangle of this well it will not be exactly the ratio between this and this is not exactly the same as ratio between this and this. However, if I will make this point as close as possible to this one, then this line, which is like a chord actually, um, this line will be closer and closer uh, as far as its direction is concerned to the tangential line. So if I will make this ratio um, going to a limit as this particular uh, increment from this point to this point is going down to zero, then I can count on the final, the limit value of the ratio between this and this as this point comes closer and closer will be exactly the, um, the, the ratio which corresponds to a real tangential line. So, how can I accomplish this using the formula? Well, very easily. If I have a point zero, now I will um, increment my value of the argument by 1 over n, where n is some natural number. Now, then I can calculate, well, for this particular line, I can calculate the ratio of this versus this as what? Now, this particular catetus is equal to value of the function at this point, at point 1 over n, minus uh, value of the function at point 0. So this particular line is equal to a to the 1n minus a to the point 0. Now, what is this? This is increment. It's between 1 and, and 0. And the ratio is this. Now, as n increasing, my point 1 over n goes closer and closer and closer to 0. So this ratio, at its limit, as n goes to infinity, will give me exactly um, the value of um, my steepness as I have defined it for this particular function at point zero. So this is basically an approach. Okay. So this is a sequence and um, whenever my n goes to infinity um, this sequence has certain limits. I mean I hope it has certain limits and if it does then this limit would be exactly uh, the steepness, the characterization of the steepness of my 
um, function at point zero. And that's how I can differentiate one uh, line from another, one function from another. Now my next uh, point is to do exactly this for two functions. One is 2 to the power of x and another is 3 to the power of x. So I will show that the steepness of this function is less than 1, which means that the tangential line would be um, would have an angle less than 45 degrees, right? Because at 45 degrees my ratio of this to this is equal to 1, right? But if the ratio is less than 45 degrees, uh, less than 1, then the angle is less than 45 degrees. So this function would be um, the tangential to this function would, would make an angle less than 45 degrees. And this function greater than 45 degrees. So the ratio will be greater than 1. So that's what I'm going to prove right now. Now, as a problem, a similar problem was discussed actually during the... Um, it, it, it's one of the problems uh, in, in the chapter for exponential functions. So I will just use exactly the same, the same logic. This is kind of a refreshment, if you wish. Um, so, what I'm going to do is... So let's consider first function 2 to the power of x. So, I would like to prove that 2 to the power of, well, not x, actually, 1 nth, right? Minus 2 to the power of 0, divided by 1n minus 0. I would like to prove that this is always less than 1. Now, if I will prove that this is always less than 1, then I can go to the limit, and the limit is also would be less than, or at least equal, maybe, but definitely not greater than 1. That's from all these theorems about the limits which we have already um, learned in the previous lecture. So that's what I'm going to do. Now this particular um, uh, inequality is uh, obviously equivalent to this one. Minus 0 I can delete. 2 to the power of 0 is always 1. So it's this. So um, it's equivalent to 2 to the power of 1n minus 1 less than 1n, right? I multiply both sides of, of the uh, inequality to the positive constant 1 over n. Or, if you wish, 2 to the power uh, 1n less than 1 plus 1n, right? I added 1 to both sides. Or, I can raise both sides into the power of n uh, and this is equivalent to this. So this particular inequality is equivalent to this one, uh, sorry, n. And I'm going to prove this one. Now, to prove this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the binomial formula which I mentioned in the beginning I would like you to repeat from uh, the induction lectures in mass concepts of this course which is a to the power of n b to the power of 0 uh, n divided by 1 sorry plus n divided by 1 a to the power n minus 1 b to the power of 1 plus n n minus 1 divided by 1 2 n n minus 2 b square plus etc. The common member is n n minus 1 etc. n minus i plus 1 divided by 1 2 3 etc. i uh, a to the power n minus i, b to the power of i, and the last one would be a0, b, n. Now this is binomial formula of Newton, which, um, which we have proved by induction in the lecture which I have just refer, uh, referred to, and I'm going to use it for this purpose. So a is 1, 
B is 1 over N. So let's just think about what happens in this particular case. Well, obviously, if uh, 1 and 1 over N are A and B, all members are positive, right? That, that's obvious, right? So the first member is 1 to the power of N, which is 1, and 1 over N to the power of 0, which is still 1. So I have 1 plus 1 over n to the n's equals 2. The first member is 1. Second member, n over 1, which is n, times a to the power of n, mi uh, uh, n minus 1, 1 in any power is 1, and b to the power of 1, 1n one to the power of 1, plus. Now, Starting from the third and the fourth, etc., doesn't really matter. They're all positive because I already have two, right? So that's why one, o one plus one over n to the power of n is greater than two. It's two plus something, and something is the whole tail of all these things. So that's easy, right? Okay, fine. So I have proven this particular inequality, which means if I will go to um, a limit with n go going to infinity, it actually resulted in the following thing. Let me just repeat it. Less than 1, which means that the limit of this will also be less than 1, and uh, this is tangential line 2 to the power of x. So this angle is less than 45 degrees. That's about 2 to the power of x. Now let's talk about 3 to the power of x. It's slightly uh, more complex, but I will use exactly the same formula. So it's 3 to the power 1 over n minus 3 to the power of 0, 1 over n minus 0, it should be greater than 1. That's what my point is right now. All right. Or, again, minus 0 we can remove. 3 to the power of 0 is 1. So that's equivalent to, if I will multiply by 1n, that's completely equivalent to this one. And this is completely equivalent to this one. And this is, I will uh, raise to the power of n, both sides, equivalent to this one. So that's what I have to prove. Again, I will use this and uh, use the binomial formula. So what do I have here? So I have 1 over n, uh, 1 plus 1 over n to the power of n uh, Uh, should be less than three. Why should I? Why did I have more than greater than three? But let me start from the beginning. I think I changed the sign somewhere. So three to the power of one n minus one divided by one over n. It's supposed to be greater than one, right? Right. So three is supposed to be greater. 3 is supposed to be greater than 1 plus 1 n to the n, right? Okay, fine. So I have to prove that this is less than 3, right? I just changed the direction. All right, so how can I prove that? Well, again, let's just look at this particular binomial formula. Let's start from the beginning. Well, obviously the first is 1, and the second one is 1 as well, right? We already did it with this one. Now, um, 
in case of the previous one we just completely removed all detail and obviously that uh, resulted in this uh, particular inequality. In this case to prove the upper boundary that 3 is actually above this we will use all these members and um, what I will do is I will actually increase every member so that's why I will put sign less here because I'm going to increase every member not this one and not this one starting from this member what I'm going to do is the following what is B? B is 1 over N, right? this is B, this is A, A is 1 so A should be completely ignored from everywhere, right? B is 1 uh, over N so B square is 1 over N square now um, notice the following thing uh, b square or 1 over n square is n and n in the denominator in the numerator I have n and n minus 1 so n and n minus 1 in the numerator and n and n in the denominator obviously the denominator is greater so if I will completely reduce this and this I will only increase my uh, my value of this particular member, right? Since I'm replacing n times n minus 1, I'm increasing to n times n, in which case I will have n squared here and n squared here. Now, in a general um, member, same thing. b to the power of i is basically 1 over n to the power of i. Each one of these and the number of these is also i by the way each of these is either is equal to n or less than n so if i will replace them with n i will only increase it but if i will replace them with n it will be n to the power of i and this is n to the power of i right and if i will completely uh, eliminate them i will increase my um uh, my my expression right so that's why i put the sign less so that's 1 plus 1 plus 1 over 1 times 2 remaining plus 1 over 1 times 2 times 3 plus etc plus 1 over um, 1 times 2 etc times i etc plus 1 over uh, Uh, I factor uh, n factorial actually from I to n now the last one is obviously this because the coefficient is 1 which is actually n times n minus 1 etc etc times 1 and this is 1 times 2 times 3 times n that's why I have it 1 but it doesn't really matter the the denominator 1 times 2 times etc times n remains but numerator was actually um, replaced with n to the power uh, n to the power of n and it reduced with n with b, b, b to the power of, uh, of n okay now I will increase it even more so again it's less than 1 plus 1 is 2 plus okay forget about 1 doesn't really matter and every one of those I will replace with 2 which means what? I will reduce denominator which means I will increase uh, the whole number right so it will be 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 times 2 which is 2 square plus 1 over 2 to the third power plus etc and the last one 1 to the nth power right? I, I will increase it again instead of re, uh, instead of actually ending up at, at number n I will um, go to infinity because you know what this is right one half plus one quarter plus one eighth etc it's an infinite geometric progression the sum of it is obviously is equal to one uh, and that's why it would be two plus one 
which is 3. So that's my inequality. Finally, I um, proved that 1 plus 1 n to the power of n is less than 3. Because I'm increasing and increasing and increasing, and finally I got only 3, right? So that's why it's less than 3. Okay, what does it mean graphically? Graphically, it means that the steepness of 3 to the power of x is greater than 1. That's what it means. So graphically, again, if this is 45 degrees, now this is greater than 45 degrees, and that's where my 3 to the power of x. So the tangential line at point 0 is steeper than 45 degrees. That's quite interesting. You see, with um, exponential function, we don't need this anymore, our binomial formula. So back to exponential function. So 2 to the power of x has a steepness, let's call it beta, less than 1 at point 0, right? 3 to the power of x has steepness greater than 1. Now, what does it mean? I mean, obviously, and we actually talked about it many times, the greater the base, uh, the steepness basically is, is, is growing. And, and that's what's important here. It's growing from 2 to 3 from some number which is less than 1 to some number which is greater than 1. Now, it's natural to assume that the steepness is gradually increasing from something which is less than 1 to something which is greater than 1 as the base is increasing from 2 to 3. Which means that somewhere in between, between 2 and 3 there is some number where the steepness at point 0 exactly equals to 1. So we are talking about um, the line which has steepness this 45 degrees. So this base of this particular um, uh, um, exponential function has some, uh, th this base is in between 2 and 3. It's not an integer number. Well, obviously there is such a number. In, in, in calculus and mathematical analysis it's actually proven uh, that this number is um, in between 2 and 3 and it's irrational by the way it's interesting in geometry pi is irrational number right in analysis in calculus e is also irrational number approximately it's equal to 2.71 um, actually there is a joke among mathematicians. Is it true that e to the power of pi is equal to pi to the power of e? Well, uh, they are close, but they are not equal. I mean, this is completely wrong. Uh, completely wrong. But, you know, sometimes people are asking the questions like this. So, in any case, e is a very important point, a very important number in analysis, as I was saying. It's as important as pi in geometry. And the main characteristic, and that's how we actually introduce this particular number, is that the function e to the power of x has the steepness at point 0 exactly equals to 1. So this is equal to this in the limit as we are moving closer and closer between these two points. All right? Now, what's the value in some, I mean, I, I have kind of indirectly defined uh, this number e. It's the number which is in between 2 and 3 w w with this particular function e to the power of x having the, um, the steepness of 1. Can I define it a little bit more precisely? Well, yes. And here is the considerations which I can offer uh, in this particular case. So, what I know is that um, e to the power of 1 nth minus e to the power of 0, which is 1, divided by 1 n, 
minus zero, which is okay. Um, it's uh, going to one as n goes tend to infinity, right? So that's what I know. Because this is exactly the limit of uh, uh, ratio between change of the value and change of the argument as the argument is closer and closer to zero. That I know. Well, what does it mean? It means that as n becomes greater and greater, this is almost equal to 1. And this approximation is better and better as n increasing to infinity, right? Now, let's just change this, uh, um, this uh, approximation slightly. Um, this is not as rigorous I, as I would prefer it to be. In, in higher levels of mathematics and calculus and in analysis, it's proven uh, much more rigorously. But in this particular case, I think these intuitive um, manipulations are, are very useful and kind of natural. So I'm using approximately equal to, with saying that approximation is as better uh, as the end goes to infinity. Now, uh, if I will um, change this to this, right, or this, oops, I meant this, 1 plus 1 n, and then raised to the power of n, I will have this, with saying that approximation is better and better as n goes to infinity. So what I can say is that E is the limit of 1 plus 1 over n to the power of n if n goes to infinity. This is an important formula. Now the formula is actually exact. I did not prove it rigorously, but the formula is correct. I just illustrated how it can be derived but not exactly rigorously, because I cannot really, with approximation, do the same as I do with equality, obviously. But anyway, I did it just for intuitive kind of purposes. So this is the value. Now, um, uh, let's just evaluate for a couple of n's. If n is equal to 1, I have what? 1 plus 1 to the power of 1, which is 2. So e is approximately equal to 2. If n is equal to 2, I have... Um, 1 plus 1 half, which is 3 halves, square, which is 9 fourths. So E approximately 9 fourths, which is 2 and 1 fourth, right? If N is equal to 3, um, uh, it's uh, 1 plus 1 third, 4 third to cube, 64, 27, 64, 27, that's 2. That's uh, 54, so it's 1027, right? Now, as you see, it's growing, but we know it's limited to, it's, it's no greater than, than, than 3. So basically, if you will do this up to infinity, you will see that you will get some number like this. So that's the value of E. So we have introduced a specific value, a number actually. We have introduced the number which we call e, and therefore we have introduced the function. This function now makes sense because I know what e actually is. It's some real number, irrational by the way. Now, but this function is a regular um, uh, uh, function which, which has uh, the, the regular exponential function, so it has the regular exponential properties, which is e to the power of 0 is equal to 1, as any other a to the power of 0. Now, e to the power x plus y is equal to e to the power of x times e to the power of y. This is the property of all exponential functions, including this one, or something like this. So all we know is this one. And then I would like actually to, um, to um, pay attention to one specific property of the function e to the power of x, which no other function actually has. 
here it is so we know what the property which we call a steepness at point zero is right so we have introduced this concept we have the increment of the function from zero from x is equal to zero to, the, to x is equal to one n and divided to uh, increment of the argument from zero to one n right and we know that this goes to one okay what I'm going to say is that very similarly we, we can introduce a steepness uh, at any point, right? So here is the graph. Here is my point. I call it x0, okay? I can have x0 plus 1 nth, right? Which is this one. And I will do exactly the same thing. I divide this by this and then as n goes to infinity point x0 plus 1 n goes closer and closer to here and this particular ratio becomes a steepness of this particular function at point x0 right so what exactly is this well this is e to the power of x0 plus 1 n minus e to the power x0 divided by difference between the arguments x0 plus 1 n minus x0 equals now I have just mentioned the property of uh, exponential function that if you have sum of two uh, exponents it means x to the power of zero it's exactly equal to to this one right and here I can reduce by x zero so it will be one n equals obviously I can factor out e to the power of x zero and here I will have right what is this this is a steepness at the point x is equal to zero as n goes to infinity right so it goes to e to the power of x zero because this steepness as we have actually defined uh, the number e it's the function which has a steepness with, 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 with the, the e, uh, e, if the function with this base has this particular steepness of, ze uh, of equal to, to, to one so this goes to one as n goes to infinity that's why the steepness of function at any point x0 is equal to exactly the same function value at this point because e to the power of x0 is constant, right? As n goes to infinity. This goes to 1. So the product goes to e to the power of x1. Okay, this is quite a remarkable property of the function e to the power of x. Its steepness at any point equals to its value at this particular point. No other function, well, except some function which derived which is derived from this one, like this multiplied by 2, for instance. No other principally other function has this property. That's what's very important. It's almost like a characteristic property of the function e to the power of x. And this is the end of this lecture. That's the last property I wanted to talk about. I wanted to introduce, using the limit theory and some other knowledge which we have known, we have, I wanted to introduce the number e and the um, uh, function e to the power of x. Well, that's it for today. I suggest you to read the notes to this lecture on the unisor.com. Um, well, uh, I will probably use this particular function in some other very important um, cases. In particular, when I will talk about trigonometry and complex numbers, there is a, a remarkable connection between this number, 
the trigonometry and the theory of complex numbers which is basically uh, which looks like one formula the Euler formula um, which I'm going to discuss uh, a little later uh, in this course it's a, a synergy between the number E, the complex numbers, and trigonometry in one formula. It's really a beauty, quite frankly. I mean, I was, I was always amazed how certain pieces of mathematics can be beautiful, but this is, definitely. So, that's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck.